20 years ago today, The Fellowship of the Ring hit theaters. The importance of this movie and its sequels to cinema and to the culture generally would be difficult to overstate. Tolkien didn't invent the fantasy genre, but he is largely responsible for it looking the way it does today. In a similar way, fantasy movies and fan culture existed before Peter Jackson's Fellowship came along. But virtually everything that has happened in on-screen nerd culture in the last 20 years was either built on or compared to the new foundation that Jackson built. I could go on in this vein, but there will be thousands of other articles, videos, and podcasts that delve into that stuff. And that's not my purpose anyway. My purpose today is more modest and more intimate. So let's establish what this video is about. It's not about breaking any new ground. I won't tell you anything about the Fellowship of the Ring that you didn't already know. There are no revelations, no tidbits of trivia, no deep cuts from the lore. This video is too personal for that stuff. What I will do is tell you about why I love this movie so much and the impact it's had on me for the last 20 years. My hope is that you'll see in my self-indulgent reminiscing a reflection of your own love of the films. I hope that some of my experiences will echo some of yours, and we can simply share something nice together for the next few minutes. With that in mind, let's travel back in time, back to Friday, December 21st, 2001. I was 15 years old. The official release of The Fellowship of the Ring had come a day or two earlier, but this was the day that I went with my family to go see it for the first time. It was my mom's idea to go, which surprised us since she doesn't really like going to the movies. But she does like fantasy literature, and she had raised us on Terry Brooks and Lloyd Alexander and the Star Wars Expanded Universe. One thing she'd never given me, though, was Tolkien. Odd, perhaps, but true. Now I find myself in the theater, waiting for a movie to start about which I know absolutely nothing. After the previews and the PSAs come the New Line logo and some ominous mood music. The screen goes black and I hear a whisper. Then Kate Blanchett speaks. The world is changed. As the title fades in, we get our first taste of Howard Shore's music. And in these first 30 seconds, I'm utterly smitten. By the time the prologue is done a few minutes later, this is already the most consequential movie experience I've ever had, and frankly one of my most consequential experiences, period. I would later go and buy the book for myself, devour it, and seek out more, and more, and more about The Lord of the Rings, about Tolkien, about Elvish, and so on. I learned words like philology and etymology, and that Old English was in fact far older than what I'd read in Shakespeare. I was asked to consider the real definition of magic and the fact that we're constantly surrounded by it in our own world. Through this story with thousands of years of history, history that still affects the environments and actions of our heroes, I came to better understand why I should care about my own history and that of the world around me. In short, I learned more as a teenager from that book about reading and studying and living than I did in school, where genre literature is, and perhaps always will be, frowned upon. Eventually, The Lord of the Rings would influence what I studied at university, the jobs I sought out, and even what I named my kids. And I can trace it all back to that day in 2001 when I sat dumbfounded for three hours until I left knowing that the course of my life had just been altered forever. Does that sound a little too grandiose? No, I'm not embellishing. It really was that affecting, even in the moment, even for a 15-year-old. <laughs> Maybe especially for a 15-year-old. They say 15 is the golden age for sci-fi and fantasy, and the cynical among they might say that of course I liked it because I was just the right age for it, that's all. And there's probably some truth to that, but on the flip side, I'm grateful that I was lucky enough to come across it at exactly the right time in my life. I was 15 and at the tail end of the moodiest and most difficult years of my life up to that point. Anyone who has survived the gauntlet of their teen years knows what I'm talking about. So at 15, not only was my imagination a fertile field for Peter Jackson to begin cultivating, but I was also at a crossroads where I could either grow into an angry, pessimistic adult, or I could choose to see and be better than that. Walking out of the theater on that December day, I had been firmly nudged onto a happier and more optimistic path. Which is odd for a movie that, at first glance, is awfully dark. 
But peering through all that darkness is a blinding brightness. Yes, there's fear and danger, but that's set against the purest of friendships and the greatest courage. We have betrayal and terror, but also repentance and forgiveness. Against temptation, we see wisdom and self-sacrifice, and so on. For a moody, angsty kid, this is gold. And frankly, it continues to be such for a grown man 20 years later. And more broadly, in a world that seems to get more and more angry and cynical every day, The Fellowship of the Ring has something that we all sorely need in greater doses, earnestness and goodness. One of the reasons it works so well at dispensing all these life-changing, world-changing lessons is that at its core, it's just a damn good movie. The writing, the performances, the costuming, the design, the effects, the music, there are no weak links here. You don't have to watch hours of special features and commentary tracks to see how much love and care and passion went into making this movie. And it's pure joy for fans of the genre. Here is a fantasy story, the kind I'd grown to love throughout my childhood, being presented on screen in an absolutely serious way. There's no apology for its high, archaic language, or its bizarre creatures, or its moral simplicity. There are no winks to the audience, no self-conscious nods, no subtle pleas to critics that it be taken seriously even though it's one of those movies. It succeeds on its own terms, and it isn't sorry about it. What a triumph. So, 20 years later, a heartfelt thank you to Peter Jackson and the writers, actors, and crew for creating something that not only changed the course of cinema, but changed the world. And just as importantly from where I'm sitting, changed me. And all for the better. <laughs>